Welcome back to this series of light reading conversations around 5G orchestration. Terry Sweeney here with Light Reading, and joining me now is Ron Porter, head of 5G network and OSS product marketing with Amdocs. Ron, thanks for joining us today. Hi, Terry. It's great to be here. Uh, let's uh, let's start with some context setting. I'm curious about your assessment of the the current state of 5G orchestration at the beginning of 2022. Talk a bit about where we are and and what you see from your perspective. So so I mean, really, what we've seen up until now, 5G has rolled out right after many years of talking and pretty much is deployed globally, and and all eyes now are on kind of the next deck of next step of 5G as it moves into 5G standalone, right? Um, and as such, I think there is an expectation, I mean, in parallel has been process of the network becoming much more virtualized and software defined. And in the, the latest years also becoming cloudified and that, that came hand in hand with the 5G evolution. So as a result uh, of this network cloudification, there's enhanced requirements for automation across the network. Mm -hmm. And, and parallel to that, service providers are starting to explore also how to monetize in, in new ways. So all of these kind of requirements are converging to the need to do this um, 5G orchestration. It's like a, um, an entirely new mode of, of operation and monetization. To, to an extent, it's the next phase of, of digital transformations that operators have been ongoing, right? They wanted to interact with their users, be it consumers or enterprises or partners, and um, offer their new services uh, in new real-time dynamic matters. And, and the services are becoming much more dynamic. So all this dynamicity on the service level, which are becoming also more complex, and on the network level, calls out for this new need of uh, a 5G orchestration. And this is evolving all throughout the network, right? Of course, I mentioned the 5G standalone core, which is cloud native, and now you know, can be deployed on the public cloud, or in the private cloud of the service provider or in the distributed mode, and maybe some of the network functions will need to be at the edge or in, multi, in, in several locations. Um, edge is, of course, becoming a very hot topic and orchestrating the edge as part of the network operation. You may have multiple tiers of edge and how that's operated. Um, and the RAN itself, which is now uh, evolving towards more virt virtual like VRAN and open RAN. So even the RAN functions will now become uh, uh, something that you need to orchestrate and manage where they sit uh, and, and maybe scale them and adapt them to the dynamic service needs. So all these things are coming together uh, um, and this new mode of operation that has to be much more dynamic and real time and on demand and very much responsive to the needs of the, the, um, the customers, right? And again, like I mentioned, it can be anything from services offered to consumers or to enterprises. And of course, the big promise is in opening it up to, to partners. So, so it's a very exciting time, I would say, in this, uh, um, in, in this area. I mean, the, the network has always been a network of networks, but it seems as if 5G orchestration just takes that to a whole exponentially new level. It's, it's, it's practically meta. Would you agree? Well, yeah, I mean, to, expand, to an extent. So <laughs> it's funny you say meta because that, that's, that's another topic. But no, I mean, we've, we've been involved in NFV and in the network virtualization for many years. And that was the first steps, right? The functions are now virtualized. You don't need the boxes, but now you need to start managing that. And like, we, like you, you say, it's now you know, going in an exponential level. Everything is becoming not only virtualized, but containerized. Mm -hmm. containerized. It's becoming cloud native. We're seeing this mm -hmm. um, cooperation and some convergence with the public cloud providers, right? Some functions in the cloud, the public cloud, uh, some of them are, uh, well, most of them have public edge extensions. So the, C the operators are cooperating with them. And now you have to orchestrate all of this pretty, you know, it's multi-vendor, multi-domain uh, uh, network, but you cannot keep orchestrating it in, a, in the siloed approach because your services are spanning the entire network. And whoever's buying the service has, you know, has expectations that you, you know, as the service provider needs to make sure it happens as you promise. So, sure. so sure. it's a cool evolution. And I'm saying, I was saying, you, you mentioned meta and, and that's like, you know, today that is the key use case. And, and, you know, everyone's talking about the metaverse as the use case. To me, it's very exciting to see as the capabilities emerge, 
the, the use cases will start to evolve. And I think there's some frustrating there of saying, wait, what, what is, you know, where is the 5G use case? I'm not saying it will be the metaverse, but as capabilities are there and more solid, there'll be place for these um, applications to evolve. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about that. Sure. Well, I mean, in that vein, um, I, I think we can agree that um, 5G orchestration presents uh, uh, a massive multi-tier integration effort. Um, talk a bit about some of the, the key elements that, that will have to come together to, to realize this vision. Yeah, so, so there's a number of components when we, when we think about you know, how all of these moving pieces will, will have to come together. Um, so first of all, and I, I'll start from the business or from the service layer, we have the service orchestrate because we mentioned before, the services now, well, there'll be much more dynamic, much more tailored, many, uh, a higher number of services and you know, operators are constantly looking and they will want to experiment with diverse services, but the services are also becoming much more complex. So if now a service provider wants to offer, um, um, let's say a service of, of uh, um, facial recognition to an enterprise or a police department. So the service might encompass the cameras, but also a, a, a facial recognition application, and it might have to sit on the edge, so there's low latency, so also an edge resource, and maybe also storage in the cloud, and a specific slice with uh, the required parameters of quality of service to, to, to serve to that um, uh, application, and maybe also installation, and a management app. And so there's multiple things, multiple things that have to happen here. And the service orchestrator is key to, you know, at the end of the day, what the user will see, he'll just see a box that says, right, a, a facial recognition application and maybe enter the number of cameras and, and upload their locations. But then the service orchestration has to break this up and take care that everything happens as it should um, and in the order it should. And then a very important step there is the network orchestrator. So the service orchestrator will, interact with the network orchestrator and the network orchestrator has to work across multiple domains, multiple vendors, making sure it happens across, like we mentioned before, across the RAN, across the edge, across the transport in the core and even into the public cloud, according to the specific service requirements. So that's another end-to-end -end service orchestration that has to happen across the network. So these are the two kind of key orchestrators and naturally we, we tie them to uh, a single unified designer. So we have a unified designer where we onboard network functions from different, vendor, from different vendors so they can be now orchestrated and uh, um, you know, um, compounded together to different network services and, and, and customer services. And in that designer, also the services them, uh, themselves are defined, be it a, a straight customer service or even you know, a network slice in itself is a service that is composed of multiple elements. So you define all that in the designer. And in the designer as well, you would also start to define, you know, assurance policies. What happens in case of a load at a specific place, or you know, various use cases and scenarios. And of course, want to back that with an I, so eight with AI, so that you have an assurance module that can leverage the orchestration capabilities you have to to ensure closed loop operation, to ensure the services keep working as you expect them, to maintain the business considerations. And again, the business considerations are key here because the assurance will, will take in um, operational inputs, like maybe load or you know, number of people or load of, uh, of various network functions, but also will have to consider uh, business considerations. If somebody paid for a higher reliability than other people, then you know, when I'm making decisions what to scale, I'll, I'll give preference to whoever paid for a higher reliability because I, I'm putting in monetization considerations. And, and maybe just the last, I'm saying the last element, but actually we're finding it to be very important in, in projects we're doing and also some research we're doing in the field is the inventory. So the inventory is like, you know, the single source of truth for the operator, everything happening in the network from the network perspective, network resources and the service resource and the services. But like we, we just talked about, it's now multiple domains. So some operators have made uh, you know, inventory and inventory and inventory according to different um, systems and networks that, that they have in there. So they need a unified inventory, single pane of glass, and it also has to be real time and dynamic because the network is moving around, the services are moving around, and this inventory will now be inputs both for, for the assurance and even for monetization capabilities. 
So all of these things have to work together to enhance this, uh, to empower this, you know, end-to-end -end 5G orchestration. Um, and, and at the end of the way, and the end of the day, it's about abstracting the complexity, right? It's about hiding this very complex network, very complex services, but giving the users this very simplified, streamlined experience. By the way, it's much like, you know, the, it's happening in the cloud, but we're used to it happening that way in the public cloud. And it, now this kind of mode of operation has to, to, um, to trickle down, I think, into the network. Thanks for that. Um, to take it down to a more practical level uh, where, where the rubber meets the road with, with 5G orchestration, um, talk about some of um, where we're likely to see some of the early use cases. Any, any promising tests or field trials in, that are in, in motion? Yeah, so I think th th that's an excellent question and, and we get asked that a lot. And we're working with a lot of service providers, I think on two levels. So one level is we are working with multiple service providers all around the world, um, first and foremost on, on an operational perspective. How do we handle this 5G orchestration? And, and we have operators where we're working with, you know, orchestrating two different RAN vendors and three different core vendors, because there's one core, but there's network functions from three different vendors that need to be orchestrated and also an edge orchestrator and maybe also uh, 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 elements in the public cloud. So we're doing many trials and POCs with different vendors on how to work in this very open multi-vendor environment and how to start even implementing things like network slice, right? If I have a slice and I have different parameters that have to go end to end across these different domains, across these different um, uh, uh, vendors, you know, how do I have this single orchestrator that can make it happen and understand the business intent and, 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 and work with the different domain orchestrators to make sure they fulfill what's needed. And, and of course, it's, it's not a simple task to do. So that's why it's initial steps in these different trials and POCs. Um, and also keeping in mind, I just men mentioned the operational angle, there's also the, the monetization angle, right? How will I charge for these new services? Well, you know, I'm not going to count megabits like uh, uh, you know we were used to do it. Uh, I want to monetize it in new ways. It can be per load, it can be per slice, it can be maybe time of utilization. There's many different aspects here. Um, in, in parallel, we're also uh, working in, in the 5G Open Innovation Lab. Uh, and this is a, a lab in uh, the United States where um, there are a few founding members, and Amdocs is one of them, but also uh, T-Mobile, uh, Microsoft, uh, uh, VMware, um, uh, Dell, um, NASA. So quite a few of these, and, and I probably forgot other part of you, of these founding members have brought together this 5G Open Innovation Lab. And there's dozens of these startups that have joined, and, and every few months, additional startups come into play. And the whole purpose of this uh, 5G Open Innovation Lab is to find real practical use cases and put them into play. So the first place that we've been working on has been um, in a farm, a use case around agriculture. And even in these farms, it's, it's actually a couple of farms, uh, we are implementing three different use cases at the farm. So one that already went live is a use case of drone taking 4K footage of, of uh, the crops and fields all around the huge field of the, the um, the farmer, and then the analytics get processed in the edge and compressed, and some of that is sent up to the cloud for enhanced analysis by a, a, a dedicated agriculture and analytics uh, um, application that sits in the cloud, and the farmer gets insights within minutes, and this is a process that used to take him even days to do because it's uploading, he had used to have to upload terabytes of data. And today it's a very streamlined process, happens automated. And again, we are there orchestrating this service from the connectivity, from what processing has to happen at the edge. There's a private network and uploading the data to the cloud and getting it back to the farmer. So that today he is you know, saving 50% on water consumption. Uh, uh, the, the yield increase is, is huge and it's much more optimized with regards to the density of crops, et cetera, et cetera. And that's just one use case. In sure. parallel, there's another use case of, of augmented reality um, uh, maintenance assistance, you know, for when tractors get broken out. So because the farms are remote, you can do some of that um, locally and he gets, so again, that is an application that needs a different requirement. 
and their security cameras. Uh, uh, and, and the next level is now also looking into a site of uh, ports and looking at all the different applications and start we can do there and another of different places. So again, it's, it's exciting because it's not about a specific use case, but looking into a bunch of specific use cases and finding how to make them work in this multi-vendor environment and, and pretty complex networking environment. But, but at the end of the day, they get what they need to work. Ron, let's let's end with uh, with uh, you taking a look into your your crystal ball. Uh, where do you see five G orchestration evolving going forward? So so that's you know crystal ball is uh, you have to be brave. I think no, but but uh, jokes aside, we we are seeing. I think it ties into everything we talked about today, right? We're seeing the first steps of the exploration phase. Right, um, operators are looking how they can operate. You know, I think it's a very shift uh, uh, in the mindset, both in the mode of operation and also into the business models and how they operate. So operators now, you know, they accept the fact they have to open their network. They're cooperating with hyperscalers. They they understand the benefits of having a multi-vendor um, network, and now we are working with them to to you know to have much more efficient. Uh, and automated operations in this environment. Um, and again, this automation comes into play both from the, like I mentioned before, from the business or service requirements down to the network in the most streamlined and efficient way and across the network. So the first stages are various explorations to make all these processes more efficient and more automated. And in, in the complex, more complex cases like, like network slicing, for example, there are initial phases of experiments with a small number of slices, still with static slices, um, uh, uh, you know, dipping into ORAN and seeing how that fits into the mix. And, and that's a whole level of uh, additional complexity we didn't even mention, but, but of course it's a consideration. And, and I imagine, again, as the operators learn how to work with that and in parallel, uh, uh, other labs, uh, I mentioned the 5G Open Innovation Lab, but there are others happening. So as the use cases are also evolving and learn how to utilize the new capabilities of the network, um, you know, we'll see more and more enhancements in that direction. And I think we'll see, you know, we're already seeing service providers offering more and more new and advanced services all the time. And I think they're learning how to, to keep taking an, more and more steps in that direction. Um, of course, they're all exploring to, enhance much more their B2B offering. And that's another area they'll, they'll, they'll um, I, I expect, look into and, and see how to the fit in, they fit in this competitive environment. And, and in the longer term, it's, you know, the longer term vision is about fully exposing their networks and, you know, exposing APIs and even in, in, enable enterprises and partners to interact with the 5G network like they're used to interact today with the public cloud, right? Maybe I'm sure. going to order a slice on demand from, uh, my computer to serve my factory or my port, et cetera, and, and pay, for, pay per use, you know, just like I order um, servers in the cloud. So that's a little bit of the longer term vision, but but again, it's a journey. I think that's the key thing that, sure. that um, you have. Well, plenty to look forward to there with 5G orchestration. Yeah. Ron, appreciate you joining us today for this conversation. Thanks for being here. Thanks a lot, it was a pleasure. We've been talking with Ron Porter with Amdocs. This has been Terry Sweeney for Light Reading. Thanks for joining us for this series of conversations about 5G orchestration. See you next time.